I like a good crime movie, a movie where the crims get together and there's a couple of eccentric ones in there and they pull off a crime and you keep wondering whether they're going to get away with it or not and how they're going to get away with it and how they're going to pull it off and two of the best of those movies the two that really started that genre of crime films in a lot of ways were directed by the same guy, a guy called Jules Dassin who was an American who made some interesting film noir movies in the 1940s and 1950s in America. He did Brute Force and The Naked City and Thieves Highway and then he fell afoul of the House of American Activities Committee and he was blacklisted. Great director, good sense of character, a real talent and the blacklist hit him and he couldn't work in America anymore. So he went over to England in the early 1950s and made a film with Richard Widmark in it called The Night in the City. He went to Paris and he hung around with some very, very dodgy people around Pigalle and uh, Montmartre and he picked up a novel called Rafifi by Auguste Le Breton and he had real trouble with it because a lot of it was written in French criminal slang and, but he still wanted to make a movie from part of it. There's a caper in the middle of the book that Dassin wanted to make a movie of. He didn't have a hell of a lot of money, the budget was very low, he got some really interesting actors and he made probably the greatest crime caper movie of all time, Rafifi. This one, it's made in beautiful black and white like all good crime movies should be. It stars Jean Sauvé as Tony Le Stéphanois. Who is an ex-con just out of jail, who's uh, suffering from some kind of lung thing, either it's lung cancer or tuberculosis. And he comes back to his usual criminal horse around Pigalle. So him, his friend Joe, who's a family man, his other friend Mario, and a guy called Cesare, who comes in from Italy, played by the director, Jules Dassin, because the actor they were going to get was under contract to somebody else and they couldn't get him. The thing that Rafifi is most known for is that there is a 32 minute portion when the robbery is taking place, when they break into the jewelry store through a very imaginative way, break into the safe and get away with the jewels. 32 minutes with no dialogue, no music, just the guys doing their thing. And it's fascinating. It really does give detailed instructions on how to break into a 1950s safe. Which is why the movie was banned in Mexico, because apparently in Mexico it was very popular for a while and there were a lot of copycat crimes doing exactly what Rafifi did. So in a sense it's a, a kind of beginner's guide to jewel robbery and it's beautifully done. Jean Sauvé is fantastic as Tony. He does a lot with the, his body language and his expressions. He's soft-spoken, but he's tough as hell. We see that when he um, goes and sees his ex-girlfriend, Mado, who has taken up with a nightclub owner called Grunta, who is a nasty piece of work. Mado is played by Marie Sabaret. She's really good in this. Uh, the interesting thing that the Sin does with this movie is he gives backstories to all of the criminals. We have uh, Tony's relationship with Mado, and how it ended and what she did after he went to jail. We've got Joe, who's a family man. He's got a wife and a son. Uh, we've got Mario with his girlfriend. And we also get Cesare, who picks up a nightclub singer in Large Door Nightclub in Pigalle, which is the one owned by Grunter. That does not end well. Rafifi is shot beautifully. Uh, the framing of the shots is terrific. The set designs are great. A lot of it was shot on location in Paris, which gives it that kind of documentary authenticity. And in a couple of areas just outside Paris, we get to see train stations and nightclubs and street scenes. It's a beautifully detailed world that Jules Dassin creates. In a sense, it's a continuation of the film noir movies that he did in America and in England. But this is, takes it to a peak. This is the movie that kind of caps 
does Sin's career. And I'm going to talk about a couple of other movies he made after that. But for me, Rafifi is where he peaked. He really did give us a crime movie unlike any other. Tough, honest, and fascinating and suspenseful crime film. If you haven't seen Rafifi, you really should. It's worth your time. It's also one of those films that if you want to be a film buff, it's a movie you've got to see. It's a bucket list kind of movie for a film buff. You really need to see it. It's beautifully done and it's just simply one of the best. There were a number of other Rafifi movies. There was Rafifi in Tokyo, Rafifi and the Women, Rafifi in Paris. There were a couple of novels that Auguste Le Breton wrote after the success of the movie. He wasn't too keen on the movie when it first came out, the author of the book. He went up to Jules Dessin and said, where's the book? You've only given a tiny portion of it. Where is my book in your movie? And Dessin tried to explain how adapting a book into a movie is done. And Le Breton, who was a bit of a tough guy, put a gun on the table as a threat. And Jules Dessin, who's not a large guy, you'll see him in the movie, he's not a kind of hulky guy, looked down at the gun and started laughing. And then Auguste Le Breton started laughing. And they became quite good friends after that. So sometimes that tough guy moment, that bit of Rafifi, really works to cement a relationship. So, having said that, Jules Dessin made a number of other movies afterwards. In the 1950s, slightly after Rafifi came out, he met a Greek actress who was famous in Greece for playing Blanche Dubois in the Greek stage adaptation of A Streetcar Named Desire. And her name was Melana Mercury. He fell in love with her, she fell in love with him, they got married. And in 1960, they made the next movie that was really a, a top part of Jules Dassin's career as a director called Never on Sunday. Melana Mercury became very famous for playing her character in that movie who is a sex worker on the waterfront in Greece and the sin himself played a character who meets her there and falls in love with her as indeed the director did with the actress and it was one of those kind of saucy very popular movies in the 1960s the music from the movie as well was very very well known after the success of Never on Sunday the Sin got together with Mercury again in 1964 for the second movie I'm going to talk about called Top Carpy, which is another robbery caper film in a much lighter tone. It's done as a comedy and it's got a good cast too. It has Melana Mercury, of course, playing Elizabeth Lip, a woman who is quite interesting in some ways. She's a self-confessed nymphomaniac. Remember when nymphomaniacs were a thing and people thought that women were nymphomaniacs well she says she's a nymphomaniac in this and the other thing interesting thing about elizabeth is well there's a few but the main one is she also gets sexually aroused by precious gems and precious jewelry in museums and when she sees it she has to have it now we all we learned this right at the start of the film because elizabeth lip played by Melana Mercury, breaks the fourth wall right from the start of the film. We know that she's telling us as the audience what's going on, which jewel she wants from the Rafifi Museum in Istanbul, and who she is, but she says that Elizabeth Lip isn't her real name. So she's a bit of a woman of mystery. She's got a very direct stare, striking looking woman, and she's playing it for fun this time around. Now, supporting her in this film, which is not a vanity project by any means, it's an entertainment which just happens to star somebody the director was very much in love with for the rest of his life. Uh, the co-stars are Maximilian Schell, playing her confidant, boyfriend, lover, and he'd just come off being very successful in Judgment at Nuremberg, a serious role, and this one's kind of a light playboy role. We get Robert Morley playing a gadgeteer who helps out with the robbery. And then we get the stooge they need to get their gear from Greece to Istanbul. A guy called Arthur Simon Simpson, played by Peter Ustinov. And Peter Ustinov got a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for playing Arthur Simon Simpson in Top Carpy. People forget the history of cinema very easily. And he's a lot of fun in this movie. He's a huckster on the um, waterfront in Greece. 
He's of English and Egyptian background and he carries an Egyptian passport. His parents never got married. His father was a soldier in the British Army and his mother was probably a sex worker. And he basically hustles tourists on the waterfront in Greece. He's picked up by Elizabeth and her boyfriend Maximilian Schell and they tell him to drive this car from Greece to Istanbul not telling him that the car was full of weapons and smoke grenades and other things they thought they would need for the robbery. They then go to the Top Kapi Museum, which used to be the seraglio for the head of the Ottoman Empire's wives. Basically, it was where the wives lived. Beautiful old Turkish buildings with cupola domes and towers and things like that. And what they're trying to get is a jeweled dagger with four perfect emeralds on it. They have a couple of other people they get on board, a, um, a circus weightlifter and an acrobat. They just need an acrobat to break into the museum and get the job done. And we see the whole caper done wonderfully well. Dasin using that skill that he had in Rafifi to show rather than tell how the caper is going to go. Uh, as I said, it's lighthearted. It's filmed in beautiful colour. It's got some great music by a guy called, and I'm reading this because I want to get it right, Manos Hatsidakis, who does some really good bazooki kind of music. You get that documentary feel when they shoot around the streets of Istanbul, kind of the way you do to a lesser extent in From Russia with Love, the James Bond film. It's really an interesting movie in a lot of ways. It doesn't take itself at all seriously. And Elizabeth's proclivity for... Being generous with her favours is not really fleshed out too much in the film, but nonetheless, Milana Mercuri is a really strong presence and a strikingly beautiful actress. She's uh, good at playing the humour of, of the piece, and even though she's not directly involved in the caper itself, the men do all of the um, stealing part, she's very much at the centre of this film. So it's really interesting that one director gave us two of the best caper movies of all time in the 1950s and 1960s and of course they have been influential on a number of other films. The scene with Tom Cruise dropping from the ceiling in the first Mission Impossible film is a direct kind of homage to Top Carpy. So all the Oceans movies including the original 1960 version which people forget, the, people remember the three Soderbergh movies from the early part of this century but they forget they were based on a movie that Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. and D. Martin did in 1960. All of these films owe a debt of gratitude to Jules Dassin and particular, particularly Rafifi. It's kind of like the progenitor of all of the other films that came afterwards in the crime caper thing. There are, America did a lot of crime robbery films like Stanley Kubrick's The Killing and a bunch of others. In, from going back as far as the early 1930s. But the kind of crime, breaking, robbing safe caper kind of films were pretty much almost invented by Jules Dessin. Really interesting guy, really interesting director. His career ended on a low note with a movie which these days you would consider really creepy called Circle of Two. I'll leave it to you to do the research on that one. Uh, in Rafifi, there's also little details of domestic life as it was in Paris in the 1950s. It kind of reminded me, even though it slightly predates these movies I'm about to mention, of the Maigret movies that Jean Gabon did in the late 1950s. He did two or three of them and they really do have that same working class street level Paris viewpoint that makes, for me, a really good French crime film. And of course that then influenced the French New Wave, Jean Luc Godard and Jean-Pierre Melville. I just, I can't speak highly enough of Rafifi in particular. Top Carpi less so. And the battery just went out on the camera, as sometimes happens unexpectedly. Um, Peter Ustinov in his autobiography, Dear Me, I'll hold it up a bit and hopefully it won't defocus my face. Had an interesting thing to say about Jules Dassin and his career. He said that because he focused his career so much on Milena Mercuri, 
it meant that he didn't reach his full potential as a director. He, Yusinov has no end of praise for both Milena Mercury as an actor and Jules Dassin as a director. But he thinks that concentrating on Mercury's career diminished the potential of Dassin's career. And I can see that in the way that his career went from there. But you've got to let people have their heart. Um, it's interesting to see Yusinov had that opinion. He said that um, he was very grateful for getting the Oscar for playing Arthur Simon Simpson. Does a great job of this bumbling, but very canny and cunning huckster, um, who is at the same time quite amusing. He sells dirty pictures to the tourists, amongst other things, and fake Greek artifacts. Um, he's a real fun character to spend a little bit of time with. And he also said that he was very grateful because it gave him his second emasculated man which is what he was calling his Oscars he got the first one as a best supporting actor in Spartacus and the second one for Top Carpi so um, the guy had jobs anyway just to summarize Rafifi Top Carpi great crime caper films worth checking out particularly Rafifi it is definitely a bucket list movie for movie buffs and it holds up incredibly well more than 60, well, 65 years after it was made. It's um, fascinating. It gives us a look into a world with which we cannot be familiar. And I love it. Uh, I don't really watch it very much because it's one of those movies that if you watch it too often, some of the magic might wear off. But re-watching it again now after about five or six years, it really held up well for me. And you should check it out. Top Carpy is kind of like this, the second verse which isn't quite as stunning as the first verse, but is very, very amusing. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back in a few days with another video. I'm not quite sure what it'll be about, but it will be about something. In the meantime, look after yourselves. Stay safe. If you'd like to, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell. But in the meantime, watch some good films, watch some bad films, watch some crime films, particularly from France and other cultures because they really do have a difference and a newness that you won't get from watching movies from your own culture and your own language group and you will not be disappointed. Anyway, take care of yourselves and I'll check you next time. On va danser.